Box Inking Media. We're delighted to be joined by former super lightweight WBC champ, Junior the Hitter, Witter. Junior, how are you doing? Man? I'm good, thanks. Good. Come to visit your gym today. You've got a bubbling little place here. You've got loads of young amateur kids. and Some, uh, some kids who want to look at them fight, train, reminding me of yourself. Yeah, there's, there's some talent here. Um, we have all sorts. Got some basic fighters, got some skillful boxers. Um, got kids coming through, I'm just thinking in five years they're going to be making waves. Uh, just uh, out of curiosity, training wise, are you training them to fight the way you fought, similar sort of style? Because I see the pad work and the mitt work and some of the footwork these guys are doing. Um, they're taking from what I did. Um, I'm showing them that and then they're adapting to, 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 to more to them. Mm -hmm. um, the style, the basic styles, the blueprint, and then they come, add their 5%, 10%, and that's what makes them special. Sweet. I spoke to your fighter, Dom Hunt. It's been, what, a month or so now? Yeah. Brilliant win for him, live on the zone. Massive stage, worldwide. Talk me through it. Uh, it was, Reflecting back on it now, yeah. it was it was it was a weird one because like we went into it and there was that many people giving Dom Hunt no chance and very little chance he'll do all right for a little bit um, and they just looked at James Flint and said James Flint's going to come through he's going to come through with all power he's going to land his big hooks and he's going to put the pressure on Dom Hunt and Dom Hunt's going to fold and I knew it wasn't going to happen I know how hard Dom Hunt hits. Um, he doesn't actually realise how hard he hits yet. Yeah, there's still so much more to come from Dom Hunt. You know I mean, and I was looking, I thought, we've worked on a game plan, that's going to work, and he executed it really well. There's lots of bits that he didn't do, but, there's, but we knew he wouldn't do everything. Yeah, so there's loads to learn and to gain from what he, what he did. And I'm just, I'm just buzzing with him, because it was, it was one of those where, locally, they had a good few people said, yeah, it's going to be a good fight, but they were all pushing towards Flint. And I just went, it's Dom's time. And obviously there's loads of other factors in play. You've got your old gym buddy Ryan Rhodes in the opposite corner. Yeah. One factor. Um, obviously it's on the zone, matchroom show. I think it was the opening show on, on the night. Yeah. Um, your old mate Steffi Bull obviously is, is at, you know, um, with, with both of you guys. And also I mentioned to Dom earlier, Tyson Fury. He was cheering Flint on. He was putting stuff on his Instagram. Uh, obviously, Dom saw it. I don't know if he saw it. How much will that play a factor in it all? Um, it does and it doesn't. To me, I mean, it's nothing to me. I don't, I don't care. Yeah, but I've come through the whole game. I've come through all the amateurs. Won a junior bay title. Been, a, been the away fighter. When I started as a pro, I went. And it doesn't bother me. Yeah, Dom Hunt a little bit, a little bit different. Um, hasn't had the experience I had. So. It, it did play on people's minds a little bit, but the, on the night, he was absolutely cool and calm. Through the press conference, the public workout, the weigh-in, he was cool, he was calm, he was calculated, and I was just so impressed with how he handled that pressure. Well, talking of the pressure, obviously, you already confirmed that a lot of people thought Flint would win that fight. He was a favourite. Why was he able to make it so easy? Because the point, you know, the scorecards were quite wide. And, yeah. you know, some, some people said he could have got stopped. Yeah. But why was Dom able to make it so easy? Because he, he's that good. Um, he's dedicated. He's, throughout the lockdown, he was in the gym. He was in, he was training, he was working, he was perfecting his talent, his art. And because of that, where other people have slackened off and not been in the gym as hard, He's been in, he's been improving, he's been learning. We've had good sparring. Um, like there's James, we sparred him, we sp sparred loads of people to be honest. And it's, it's worked really well for him. Um, and I just think he's, he studies boxing, he watches boxing. He's a boxing know-it-all, which is perfect for me. And he's done it. He's done the hard work, he's seen it and now he's understanding what I'm telling him, he's getting the little bits I've told him which he didn't do within that fight, but he's realised it since then. So next time he comes out, he's going to be even better. And talking to next time, he's been called out Saturday night by James Moorcroft, who's trained by Anthony Crawler. So ah, yeah. be, if that was a fight, that'd be another, you know, two former you know, world champions in the opposite corner, uh, yourself and Crawler. What do you say to that? You know, James, he was quite respectful about it and he said mm -hmm. he'd love to 
you know, share the ring with uh, Dom for that Centre Lady title? Well, we're in no rush. Um, he's got a good training, yeah. In, in that, and I'm not, I'm not fussed. I'm not rushing with Dom Hunt. Yeah, I mean, I haven't. I'm not disrespecting, him, but I haven't seen him. Yeah. So therefore, before we make the next move with Dom, yeah, we're gonna have a good look. See who's available. See what what shows we're gonna go on. Yeah? We still might work some stuff with Steffi. That's what we're looking at in the Ryan Roads. Um, but the zone. Of the offer's still on the table with that, so we're not rushing into anything. Um, it's been a couple other people, but I'm not bothered. I'm not rushing, I'm just going to take time, enjoy Christmas, look at things in the new year, and we'll decide from there where we want to go. Talking of the new year, you've got a massive connection to a fight that's happening. Your old gym buddy, Kelbrook, who you've probably known since day one, since he stepped into the gym. What do you make of that fight finally happening, Amir Khan, Kelbrook? I'm, I'm actually buzzing. Oh, yeah. I'm actually really excited because it's gone from a fight where it was an easy win for Kel. Didn't have a doubt in my mind that Kel was just going to breeze through Khan. Yeah. To a fight now where you're thinking, this is actually going to be a little bit of a struggle. Um, but I think it's actually great. I look at, I, cause I looked at Khan, I almost boxed Khan back in 2011 myself. That and was I know, going to be one of my questions at some point. Yeah. Doing this, but go on. Um, I don't actually, I'd have just breezed through him. I've, it never, he's never worried me. He's quick, he's sharp, his hands are quick. And he's still quick, but he hasn't got the stamina with them hands like he used to have. He's not the fighter he used to be. Kel's not the fighter he used to be. So, where it was an automatic win for Kel, it's no longer an automatic win. But I still got Kel winning it comfortably. I, well, knocking him out, to be honest. And that's, and that's the way I see it can't get him beat by a knockout. And how much of a factor will the uh, the weight clause is playing? Obviously, it's at 149, and I think Kelly's not allowed to go more than 163 the next morning. How much of a factor will that play? In? I don't think it'll play that much. Mm. Um, we all know that after Kel's last fight, he put a lot of weight back on, mm. and it didn't help him. Yeah, If you're putting on 10, 12 pounds, it's enough. So he can strip down, make that little adjustment, the weight, 149, weighs in, gets up in mind, it's £10 heavier, he's, he's hydrated, he's ready. I, think it don't, I don't think it plays a bigger factor as people will think it does. Okay. If I put a bit of a spin on it, how does Amir Khan beat Kelbrook? The junior what was his coach. <laughs> <laughs> how does Amir Khan beat Kelbrook? Amir Khan's got to stick at what he's good at. He's got to box, stay long, stay out of the range and not try and mix it. And when he gets when he gets half clipped, not jump in and have a war. But we know what Khan's like. He gets half clipped, he thinks I'm, a, I'm 10 men, I'm going to step forward and have a war. And that's how he gets knocked out. And if he doesn't do that and he just sticks and he, he basically hits and runs, sticks to the, the art of boxing, yeah, that's the only way I see him winning. Okay. Um, the tickets went on sale today and it sold out. Are you surprised by that? Not at all. Um, I've heard, I've, I've had a lot of people ask me, are you getting tickets? Can you get tickets? I'm just like, I'm not, that's not my fault eh, for this one. Yeah. Um, Gussie, Gussie Brook team, Dan Ingalls, Terry, they're sorting out tickets. I'm, I'm not getting involved. Um, it's still a big fight because they're both now past it. They've, they've had their peak, they've had their high, they've, they've won a world title, they've, they've come back, they've been beat, uh, both of them. And I just think it's still an interesting fight, but the grudge match between them is what keeps it interesting. They don't like each other. It's not a case of, it was, it's, just a, it's just a business rivalry. They do not like each other, therefore, it makes it interesting. Khan's become a real big TV personality. And Kel, still a personality, but not as big. So, rivalry's there, the spite's there. Um, I think that's the focus, what Kel needs to drag him through this training sessions to be the best he can be on that night. And just to wrap up, because a lot of fans probably don't know this, you was very close to fighting Amir Khan. Do you want to quickly tell us how close he actually got? We agreed it. It was agreed. And as far as I know, Sky stopped it because... I think one of the excuses was they had two pay-per-views in the same month and then 
So that got cancelled on that. Then he left Sky and went with um, Frank Warren's Fox Nation. He went, he went to them and because he went with Frank Warren and that, Frank didn't want anything, any part of me on against Khan, so the fight got fell through on that. Okay, sweet. Junior, thank you so much for your time. Uh, I just want to show the fans, uh, obviously you've got this gym in Rotherham. Do you want to give us a quick little walk around of your gym? Oh, can do. Go on, mate. <laughs> this, this has been the serving area where um, everybody comes and registers, signs in. Um, over here, just, just behind you, we've got some running machines. Uh, we've got the first of our two rings just here and then further down we've got a load of bags, a little, little bit of footwork room and a ring at the end. Yeah, I mean it's, it's, working, it's working very well. Um, as you can see there's a, there's a few in tonight doing a bit of a warm up at the minute. Um, but I'm, I'm just enjoying it. This, this gym's been a lifeline and I'm enjoying working that. I've got Switch It Custom, so I've still the boots, um, customising boxing boots is going very well. mention that, so if anybody wants anything customised, hit yeah. you up on Instagram. Instagram, Shoes, Instagram. gloves, anything. Gloves, boots, is it? get your name on it, get your personalised little logos on it. We're doing Dom Hunts, Kel Brooks, Kid Galahads, Billy Joe Saunders, we've done Terry Harper's, so there's, there's a few we've done. A lot of locals, a few from afar, and a few from abroad as well. So that's going very well at the minute. And I think this next year, my pros are going to come through. I've got five pros now, so I'm on that. All good. Sweet, Junior. Thank you so much for uh, inviting us to your gym today. No problem. Take care, man. Cheers.